Hi, my name is Wendy Mould and I'm a real avid fan of using your sketchbook and getting outdoors and drawing and painting, but lots of times we can't go outdoors and so we need something inside to do. I came across this uh, activity which I wanted to share with you today. I think it's kind of a fun thing. It really stretches you and makes challenges you to try something new and try something different and yet it's an Putting it in your sketchbook makes it very unthreatening. Or, I don't know if unthreatening is a word, but you know what I mean. So, without further ado, I'd like to get you started on this activity. Just what we're going to do to start off with is to make some dots. And because I have got colored paper in my sketchbook, and again, making my, this is my own sketchbook that I've made, and this is actually another story. You can learn more about this on my blog, Art by Wendy's blog. But so when I made my sketchbook, I made different colored papers in it. And so I thought it would be kind of fun to do this activity on this paper here. So you can do it on plain white paper like I have on this side, but I'm going to work on this colored paper. And so because it's colored, I I'm going to use a jello pen so that I can have white dots. And this is the beginning of the activity. It's a hundred dots. And I'd like to thank Noel Scalen, who um, gave me the idea for this activity. And I've taken it and I've uh, it's kind of moved it into another realm with it. So, but I thought you would find this interesting. So the first thing you need to do is make a hundred dots. And the dots can be close together, like this, or they can be far apart. It really doesn't matter. I actually um, made sure, when I did it the first time, that I did a hundred dots, just to see how that would work out. So I'll let you go ahead and make a hundred dots on your paper. If you're doing white paper, you can do it with a pencil. Uh, and you know me, being a pen artist, I would always do it with a pen. That way it kind of forces me to use what's there and to deal with it that way. So I'll see you later once I have my 100 dots. Okay, so it's time to start using those dots. I've decided to use a sepia pen because I thought it would look kind of nice on this kind of paper. And, uh, and just my initial marks, I'm, I am quite pleased. It's not quite as harsh as a black. You can use a pencil if you want to join your dots or jump right into the pen. This is something that I always strive to do is get better at jumping into pen. So this kind of activity is really good for this kind of, of um, practice. So where you place your sunflower really doesn't matter. I If it goes off the page, it goes off the page. I kind of like that sometimes to have things go off the page. Uh, in this particular case, I decided to start where I did, and I thought maybe it would fit on the page and it would give me room to put some leaves and things like that below it. So I just keep working away at it, uh, looking at my reference, joining up some dots, not worrying if the petals aren't exactly perfect. This is part of, uh, this is another byproduct of this not byproduct, I would say, a uh, really good part of this activity is it helps you break away from the feelings of perfection. If you have to hood, hit a dot in order to make any of your shapes, it means that you're not going to be perfect. And it helps you uh, see some of the little idiosyncrasies that can show up. And um, I don't know, it makes it kind of interesting. And again, it takes away all that threatening things of trying to do it perfect. You can just jump in there and go for it. So now, as I'm finishing up the drawing, I'm thinking about how I'm going to add some color to my picture. In this particular case, I have used a paper that will not support watercolor or anything wet. And so I've decided to use colored pencils. But it would look, if your paper will accommodate something wet, you could use uh, watercolor, watercolor pencils, anything like that, a few pastels. It's kind of fun to add color to this. And so um, that will be my next step. 
Now for the color, uh, as you can see, I'm going. I'm looking at the reference a little bit and just kind of building up what I'm going to do for it. Uh, I like to work with my colors in layers, so you'll see me working around with uh, first some oranges and just lightly, and then adding a bit of yellows and things like that. And then finally, I would glaze over the whole thing with a, another color. And that way I, I find it gives it a nice blend and I get some nice leather, some nice gradual transitions. One of the things I forgot to talk about earlier on in, in this little video is your subject. I chose sunflowers just because it's um, sort of a simplified, you know, one sunflower kind of thing that I could draw. You could do um, flowers, scenery, art, uh, articles, a boat, uh, you know, a truck, a car, animals. I've done it with rabbits, as a matter of fact. So the thing is, you're not going to get really de detailed, and so that's all that you have to keep in mind when you choose your subject. So in this case, I'm actually quite pleased with how this sunflower is coming, and um, yeah. Pick whatever you want to draw. Okay, I have finished coloring uh, my picture, my dot to dot picture that I did. But as you know, many creative uh, activities lead to more inspiration. And so I decided to do the other side of the page. And I often do this in my sketchbook where I, I'll do a complete thing that takes up both pages. Only this time, I've done my dots in with a blue pen, and now I have also drawn in my flowers. So I will finish that up and let you know how that turns out. Well, here it is, already started. It's a bit of a sneak preview of uh, what was happening. It's looking very interesting. I'm quite excited about it already. Well, I have finished the uh, second drawing of my sunflowers and I must admit I do like my colors on the white better than the brown the tan color here but that's neither here nor there I'm actually quite pleased with the page as, as a whole and if you notice I join this leaf here to make it a, a total unit even though the papers are different colors um, some of the things that I wanted you to think about when you do this kind of activity is definitely you are going to be able to break away from perfection. For me, it gave me an opportunity to move straight to the pen. I know many of you may not want to do that, but it gave me that freedom to do that and not worry about being perfect because of course I was restricted by the dots as to where I could put my petals. Uh, so that was a big thing for me. It gave me a lots of practice in working with my colored pencils and mixing colors. And it gave me a really pleasant activity that I, found very enjoyable. So um, I hope you do as well. I'll just give you a little bit of a close-up here of how things worked out. And as you can see, the dots that aren't used, because of course you're not going to use them all, they kind of make an interesting backdrop for the rest of this. I mean, I could color this backdrop, but I kind of like the colors that are happening there now. Um, uh, uh, and so I hope you have fun with this. And um, again, if you're looking for other ideas, you can always check out my website, Art by Wendy's blog. I have lots of um, interesting things about painting and drawing tips. I post uh, weekly on Thursdays, and you're welcome to sign up by email and get a posting rate to your mailbox. Have a good day, and I hope you enjoyed this.